In this video, I will discuss and demonstrate the importance of both stretch and fold and coil fold of sourdough, which takes place during bulk fermentation. Hi, I'm Ron and thanks for clicking on this video. And if you'd like to be notified of my future videos, please click the subscribe button and notification bell. Bulk fermentation is a four to six hour period between the time the dough is mixed and when it is shaped for eventual baking. Two important steps take place during bulk fermentation. The first step is the handling of the dough by either stretch and fold or coil fold or a combination of both and I'll demonstrate both. And the second step is a resting period until the dough increases in volume by 25 to 30 percent. Okay then, let's begin. Each morning I feed my sourdough starter and after it is doubled in volume I make my dough, which is what I'm doing here. I begin with 600 grams of water and 200 grams of sourdough starter. Each morning when I feed my starter, I put a piece of tape on it so I can see how much it's grown. As you can see here, it's nearly triple in volume. Oops, I put too much in. Did I get some out? I don't think so. Okay, today's loaf will have a little extra starter. Quick mixing, and now let's add 900 grams of flour and 20 grams of salt. I like to use the handle of a wooden spoon to mix my dough. The dough is mixed and into the proofing box for 30 minutes. It's now been 30 minutes since the dough was mixed and time for the first stretch and fold. In addition to building structure through stretch and fold, I'm also feeling with my hand for any clumps of flour that didn't get hydrated during the initial mixing. Okay, that's looking good. Back into the proofing box for another 30 minutes. It's now been 30 minutes since the first stretch and fold, and one hour since the dough was mixed. It's time for the second stretch and fold. Can you see that the gluten strands are beginning to form? The dough is far less shaggy now than it was just an hour ago. Back into the proofing box for another 30 minutes. It's now been 30 minutes since the second stretch and fold and 90 minutes since the dough was mixed. It's time for the first coil fold. Coil fold is simply a more gentler method than stretch and fold of strengthening and developing gluten in the dough. Also, many people, myself included, feel that coil fold promotes a lighter and more open crumb.
That looks good. Back to the proofing box for another 30 minutes. Okay, it's been another 30 minutes and time for the second coil fold. If you feel the dough is going to tear, stop pulling. We don't want to tear the dough, but we want to stretch it as much as we can. And you'll need to keep your hands wet as well to keep the dough from sticking. Okay, that looks great. Another 30 minutes in the proofing box. Okay, it's been another 30 minutes. This is our third coil fold. Let me get some more water on my hands and I'll give it one more coil fold. Okay, one more coil fold. Normally at this point, I would let the dough rest until it had increased in volume by 25 to 30 percent, which usually takes a couple of hours. I would then divide and shape the dough. But to further demonstrate the effects of coil fold, I'm placing the dough in this 9 by 13 glass dish. I use a 4-quart Pyrex bowl for mixing, folding, and resting my dough, and I have done for several years. However, you may want to consider using a container like this one. I think this container's biggest advantage over my 4-quart bowl is that with this container, you could be more precise in measuring the increase in volume of the dough during bulk fermentation. Okay, our dough has risen nicely. It's time to Divide the dough, pre-shape, shape, put the dough in bamboo baskets, cover them up, put them in the fridge overnight, and bake our dough tomorrow. It's now the following day and the dough has been baked. I did not cut the bread displaying the crumb 
because I gave both to neighbors. However, they reported that the bread was very delicious. Thanks again for watching, and please remember to click the subscribe button.